Welcome to Inspire for Travel. My name is Wemba Imani and today I'm just taking you on a lovely casual evening walk here in the city of Dar es Salaam. So I do appreciate your time and thank you for always coming back and watch my videos. If you're new around here, please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking on the red box below this video that says subscribe. And to my returning subscribers, thank you so much for your custom. So right now it's evening time here in Dar es Salaam and I'm just going to go on a nice walk like you can see and I'm actually looking for something to eat right now so I'm looking for a lovely meal that I can get this time in the evening here and usually around this time one of the things you will notice in Dar es Salaam at this time there will be a lot of traffic people are trying to get back home so things can be a little bit chaotic depending on where you are living and how far you'll have to travel to nevertheless we're walking today so we'll be skipping the traffic jam and stuff like that but you'll still get a vibe and really get to see the heart and the spirit of Dar es Salaam in the evening times so yeah let me show you what I'm seeing right now on my right in front of me a view of the city as well we're going on this walk together now today I'm going to Let's wait for the police to pass. So you can see guys, I mean, if you look right now, you can see that we've got a lot, a large buildup of traffic right now, you know. And sometimes people can be in traffic for up to half an hour, an hour, and even longer, depending on where the, the traffic jam is happening but um this is something that you'll have to get used to when you visit a big city like Dar es Salaam in Africa you experience these things and yeah depending on how long you're staying these are some things you'll have to consider when you're living somewhere in Dar es Salaam for example if you know you're a person that needs to move around a lot and you don't have your own transport and you're relying on a public transport or maybe uber then you gotta consider well where do i need to go you know how far it will take for me to commute commute from one location to the next you know so yeah that's one thing you have to bear in mind when it comes to the traffic so this region this side is upanga east that's Upanga East and it's a real central location one of the things I like about Upanga is the fact that it's not too far from town if you want to go downtown you can access places like Hisutu, Samora Street and different things like that so it's really near it's in a very central location and you, you, you'll find a lot of people from the Indian community actually live in this area of Upanga um, you'll find a lot of t uh, you know Indian restaurants to some extent there's a lot of mosques there's even some schools which has a lot of children from the Indian community in this area especially in the back roads so that's one thing you'll notice in Upanga but of course you'll notice a lot of people from Tanzania and mind you a lot of um, Indian people that live here some of them were actually born in Tanzania as well but over the years you've you've had a lot of people coming from the Indian subcontinent recently and they're migrating here to Tanzania so you do get that as well so this here is a, a church I believe one of the upper up, upper class churches here I believe it's an Anglican church and one of the things you will notice that a lot of these premises around here the churches some of the um, 
restaurants you'll notice you'll see Maasai outside and they're actually security guards they have like these wooden wooden um, sticks big wooden sticks like a Trojan and of course they'll use that if anyone tries to break in or steal or anything like that you know there's a little party going on here you know so this is the vibes in Kupanga and one of the things you gotta remember you'll also find a few embassies here as well so for example the Indonesian embassy and different things can be found in this area so the word for today your Swahili word for today is Ubalozi Ubalozi and Ubalozi is a Swahili word for embassy you may want to go to the embassy so that's your Swahili word Ubalozi so to your, to your right here this is a building here and um, in Upanga and here you will find things like Kenya Airways if you need to book a flight to go Kenya Rwanda Air, um, Air Airlines is also here as well I believe these are the head office you have um, the global business here as well so this building here is quite strategic especially if you need to access some of these airlines because some people you know you may need to travel to other East African nations and um, those airlines might be your choice so yeah it's good to know where their offices are and there are also other um, companies in this building you will find for example uber the uber building is here and you got other insurance and different things like that so if you're in Upanga East you can't go wrong if you need to access this building and it's really near the Pizza Hut so if you're not sure where to find it you know Pizza Hut in Upanga is literally opposite that because right in front of me there where you see the coca-cola sign that's Pizza Hut right there so really nice area you know real calm real chill generally safe how you doing? Hi. Yeah. So we're still seeing more traffic down here, guys. But nevertheless, it's really a nice evening here in Dar es Salaam. Lovely sunset on the horizon there. And we're just going to walk and um, let me be careful with the traffic here okay yeah let's go now one of the things you gotta be careful yeah when you're vlogging in the city you gotta be mindful of your camera or your phone or whatever you're using especially for um, motorcycle guys because someone could easily ride past and try snatch your phone so you gotta be mindful of that so if you're coming to tanzania and you're thinking of vlogging in some areas anyway not not every area is like that but is that something you gotta be mindful of but it's a real chill vibe you know very chill vibe i mean you can see people are jogging here you know guy here he's jogging so we're gonna see what food we find today I'm looking for some I don't know what we'll find you know Dar es Salaam is a city there's different types of foods you know like um, because they had such a cultural influence from the Arabs Asia, Persia, and of course you had African influence as well. In a city, a cosmopolitan city like Dar es Salaam, you get a mixture of foods. So you'll get things like biryani, and that's like rice with meat mix, 
and the, the sauce is made of different spices and stuff like that you can get things like kebabs miskaki chips you know and that's like you know, these, these are some of the things you find here but if you know where to go you can also get more local foods like um, ugali sukuma wiki and that's like kale greens there you know you can get um, managu another form of uh, spinach African style and yeah different things like that barbecue chicken all of that you can get in Dar es Salaam you know but ultimately it just depends where you go to you know an area like Upanga where I am right now what you'll notice is that it's mixed because you got people from a lot of people who are obviously who run those shops you got some of them who are from like the Indian community and stuff so they sell more of their local the local food of like barbecue chicken and stuff like that but if you've traveled more to different parts of Dar es Salaam and more specifically different regions like if you go to Mwanza yeah you get different fish fishes ugali different greens and you'll find foods even more cheaper in other regions in comparison in comparison to Dar es Salaam because of course Dar es Salaam is a city and generally speaking no matter where in the world you go you will always find things are a little bit more expensive in cities So this building here is a mosque well and it's a symmetry actually it's a symmetry here as well yeah it's a symmetry it's, it's a mosque and, and, and a symmetry so So these are like flats guys these are people actually live in these buildings here apartments in the UK they say flats and this is what they look like a common feature of what you will see here in Tanzania is like you see this guy he got a big um, kettle and in the bucket there's actually cups so you know anyone that calls out to him you will stop and you will obviously take the cups out of the one cup out of the bucket and pour the tea in it for you and you will just stand there and wait until you finish drinking your tea and move on that's his hustle the tea is around 200 Tanzanian shillings now this is um, like a Chinese restaurant here like a Chinese restaurant it's called uh, Hong Kong Thai Yong Sung restaurant here so you do get you do have um, a lot of people from China and so on coming in here doing business you do see that in different places and that's one of the things you know like in China like wherever you go and you find Chinese people you notice that they'll probably have um, some kind of shop or business so on this trip here yeah this is where you will find like what I was telling you there's chips samosas you know barbecue chicken these are the type of things you will see when you're walking in this side you know things you see wakati ujao undogu 
Wakata is down. So this is a local mosque here. These are where people of the Islamic faith come to pray. And you'll see, uh, in the, you know, throughout Tanzania, there is a large Muslim population. You'll notice that when you visit here. Very friendly, welcoming people. Those that I've met, personally, I can't speak for everyone, but those I've met, very friendly, welcoming people. And that's a college over there. College of Business Education administration so there's a college and the, the shops we just passed by is where a lot of them will go and eat during the day so they'll go there for lunch probably if they come early in the morning they'll go there have a cup of tea and mandazi or something like that you know Yeah, this is a vibe in Dar es Salaam. You gotta be careful when you visit and always keep your eye open especially on night for these unexpected potholes that you may see it's not everywhere but still you just gotta be mindful of these kind of things when you're walking i was watching a, a youtuber and um, he was vlogging at night and i think he must have slipped in one of those type of um holes you know so you gotta be mindful of these kind of things when you're traveling throughout tanzania and and, and east africa in general it's, it's so important that you do that guys i'm just preparing you for when you do visit so the other day i did city mall that's city mall right there literally it's right there And um, you can, you'll find a supermarket, you'll find different shops there and all of that. And the bus station, one of the bus stations is right next to it. So it, that's what I say about Upanga, it's in a real nice central location and everything that you kind of need like, in terms of the main stuff, especially if you're new to the country, it's quite nearby. And as you get to know the area more better, then, you know, you'll branch out and explore other places. So this is an ice cream parlor here. And we're going to take a left here and we're going to walk down and check out an area called Kisutu. Now, Kisutu is actually... Uh, a lot of the businesses around there you get people from the wahindi community and that's indian community now generally speaking indians are um, traders merchants by profession so a lot of them prefer to live in cities and towns so different even in different parts of tanzania if you go to other regions if you will find that mostly in like the the may the major cities in those regions because that's where they do business so in Dar es Salaam here Kisutu is one of those areas where you'll find a lot of them you know for example coming up right here you have people from the Indian community you, you do you do see them and there are also temples there's masjids or mosque as well that you'll find here Some of them speak Kiswahili, some of them obviously have been born here, brought up here, have um, contributed to the Tanzanian society, you know, and the economy. So it's a mixture of people. Some are obviously new to Tanzania. So it all depends, you know.
casual e evening walk here in Dar es Salaam. This is Kisutu bus station. And you can see that blue bus coming up here. Now these buses was very instrumental in helping easing, you know, congestion in the city and helping people to travel from one place to the next in a much more faster time period. So that's really good. Um, it's one of the best bus systems here in East Africa. Very much organized. very organized and um, if you if you visit Tanzania you definitely have to give it a try you know check it out it's about 600 Tanzanian shillings to get on one reasonable price for people who is coming from abroad Immediately when you come here, like, you know, you see what I'm saying about the uh, barbecue chicken, you know, it's been prepared right here, you know, just like that. Hey, how about it? Yama na kuku ni ni baigani? Yama ya kuku ni baigani? Yama ya kuku ni baigani? Elfu Saba. Okay, all right, Saba. Asante. So... The barbecue chicken that you just saw there, he said it's El Fusaba. El Fusaba is uh, 7,000 shillings. You know, 7,000, 7,000. Seven thousand, and you get a, a, a chicken, and then you can buy a portion of chips and a drink. So you can get a meal really, honestly, for around 10,000 Tanzanian shillings. Now, yeah, you know, if you're on holiday and, um, you know, depending on your budget, that, that is quite inexpensive, you know, that's, that, that's, not, that's not a lot of money. But, you know, do bear in mind, this is downtown and things or more on the expensive expensive side in terms of uh, Tanzania perspective from a Tanz Tanz Tanzanian perspective so yeah that's 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 one thing you'll have to bear in mind if you visit here you know So when you come down to Kisutu, these are some of the things you'll see like immediately. And a lot of these businesses here, of course you'll have local Tanzanian working, work, working but the owners are of course from Indian, Indian Tanzanians and different things, but you can see these are all the meat being prepared on the grill. Yeah, this is the chicken. You know. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna uh, maybe walk another side. I want to show you lot some other places where where you will. Uh, find more find more restaurants so let's walk that let's walk this way oh wow the roads blocked here okay it's blocked Now, if you, if, if, if you listen carefully, you will hear something in Arabic, they say the Adhan. In uh, Kiswahili, it's known as Adani. 
and that's the call to prayer in the Islamic faith so you hear at least five times a day if you live nearby a mosque here in Tanzania more chicken and stuff on the grill big big part of the culture here you'll notice you'll see that a lot Now a lot of these buildings still have that colonial architectural design if you notice. I mean some of them been around since the early 19th century and um, it's just some basic painting that has been done on some of them you know. So when you're walking through here you do, you, you do get a, a feeling of almost like going back in time you know. Now this area of town is known as, um, another thing about it, some people call it the backpacker section because you got different, you know, hotels, hostels in this area and you get a lot of people of course who are backpacking that comes here, you know, to this side of town in Kisutu. That's the call to prayer, the Adhan. Some of these buildings, you can see what I'm saying about the colonial look. They still maintain. They still maintain the traditional so, look. So this here, this is a mosque guys, this is what a mosque in Dar es Salaam looks like very much like the uh, designs you will see in the Middle East you can see the uh, dome and the minaret right there so well well designed here right in the heart of Kisutu here in Dar es Salaam So this is the evening time guys You know a lot of the shops on this side are closed Many people are obviously gone home for, to their families and stuff like that a lot of fruits 
in these parts. People are selling mangoes, you get um, bananas, plums. That's one of the nice things when you visit uh, Tanzania. And, and in fact, you even see more when you go to other regions. Like for example, if you go to Mbea, Mbea, all right? That's like one of the, it's known as the bread basket of the nation. You know, a lot of agricultural produce come from that side. So it's really nice when you go to a place and you get to see so much of that, right? And you know you can eat fresh fruits and vegetables. Wonderful feeling and it's pretty much reasonable in terms of price. This is a tea guy selling tea and all of that. In, in Swahili, tea is known as uh, chai. People say chai. Tea is known as chai in Swahili, so yeah, very interesting. Now as I walk down this side You'll notice down this side it gets a bit more livelier More shops and all of that is available down this side so. Yeah, you can buy Swahili food. Wali, Samaki, Kuku, Choma. So if you're in the, interested in the Ugali and Samaki, yeah, that's, 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 that's real nice. And you know, you mix it with the greens. That's real nice. You'll find a lot of that kind of food as well in the Great Lake regions, you know, like Mwanza, that area up there. They like the tilapia fish and other freshwater fish can be found in that side. So we're in Kisutu, guys. Still here exploring the town. See again, you know, is this another tea guy? They're out here on, on the job, man. They're not playing. And here as well, you get a lot of fruits. Right here, the stalls are just set up where people are just selling fruits. Even watermelons, it's already cut, you know. some of these buildings like the ones you're seeing on the right these are like apartments or flats people are actually staying there and then right next to it here again it's another mosque a masjid or mosque so these are some of the things you'll see in the city it's a real nice calm vibe you know if you've been to like um the souks in Sudan, like, and that's markets or in Egypt, kind of got that feel when you come to this part of town. You hear, you hear the Quran being recited in Arabic. You're seeing a lot of, you know, Asian, Indian shops and things, things like that. Real unique feeling when you come this side. This is the Quran being recited here.
Dalla Dalla bus, local transport. Now is the evening, uh, now is the evening prayers. I believe it's Maghrib prayers right now. So we just passed the mosque, the Quran you being you heard being recited was for the for the press so of people actually praying and these are all taxis guys so if you come to Tanzania and you see the white taxis okay with the taxi symbol on it you know this is those that you can take these are taxis um, if you didn't get the Uber or anything like that and you see them yeah you can take those A lot of history in this town, man, you know. You know, many of the Indian communities came here in the past as um, indentured, indentured laborers. Some came as merchants, early part of the 19th century. But even centuries ago, you know, with the sultans of Zanzibar and different things, you had even people from India and so on that was invited by the sultans to the region here. You know, so it, it's such an amazing history going back for a number of years with a different fusion of people that came to this part of East Africa to call it home, you know, set up their businesses and different things. And today we're seeing, you know, the after effects of how things are today. We're seeing some of them own shops, some own businesses and different things like that and if you speak to some of them which we will do in some episode some of them consider themselves Tanzania you know they, they you know they don't feel that they can perhaps go back to India or anything like that they, they they're very much a part of the society so this is like downtown right and here is a place called this side is Samora Street okay but I'm gonna walk back I'm gonna walk back to um, Kisutu and, and see if I could find something to eat guys. I do hope you have enjoyed today's walk. So until the next one, thank you so much for watching my videos. I do appreciate your time. I really appreciate all of you guys. And let me know what you think about um, the, the episode so far. Do you like it? Are there certain things you would prefer to see? You know, let me know in the comment section below. I do look forward to hearing from you. My name is Gwemba Imani, and thank you for watching Inspire for Travel. Do remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel by clicking on the red box below this video that says subscribe. Thank you.